Welcome back to the show, everybody. Today, we're going to take a look at the three coral snake species that are native to the United States. We're going to talk a little bit about how to identify and recognize a coral snake without relying only on color to identify these snakes. Because I see that far too often as people are looking for that one feature to identify snakes. Um, And color is often something that people cling to. We're going to talk a little... It's not wise to just rely on something like color to identify snakes. We need to recognize and use multiple features to identify snakes. So the snake pictured here, this is an eastern coral snake, also known as the harlequin coral snake. This species is native to the southeastern United States, the coastal plain of the southeastern United States. And I'll throw up a range map. Now, of course, these coral snakes are venomous lapids, which means they have fixed front fangs. The fangs don't fold up into the mouth like they do on pit vipers, like, you know, rattlesnakes, copperheads, and cottonmouths. They have short, fixed front fangs, not rear fangs, which is a common misconception. And they have a mostly neurotoxic venom, which means it affects the nervous system. And here's a close-up of the head of an eastern coral snake. They have that kind of blunt, rounded head, round snout. They have a wide band behind the eyes. Now, both the eastern and the Texas coral snake have this wide band behind the eyes. Then the first band behind that band is the black, a black band, which is much wider than the first yellow band. So this is something to look for. Again, don't rely on just this one feature. I, ha- I can't stress this enough. But it is one of the features that we can look for. The small rounded head, very tiny beady eyes, a broad yellow band, and then the longer, broader black band behind that band. And here's another close up of an eastern coral snake. Now, when we look at the head of a coral snake, it doesn't really stand out from the neck and the rest of the body. It's kind of this, the same width as the neck Um, it doesn't stand out like it would on a copperhead or a cottonmouth or a rattlesnake which have very large venom glands uh, behind the eyes all three species of coral snakes native to the United States they have a long lanky cylindrical body smooth scales giving them a smooth, shiny appearance. This is an eastern coral snake. And here we have a Texas coral snake. And I'll throw up a range map here. And as we can see, the Texas coral snake is very similar to the eastern coral snake. In fact, at one time, they were considered the same species. However, the Texas coral snake was shown to be a bit different from the eastern coral snake and they were separated into separate species. So the Texas coral snake is Microris tenor and then the eastern coral snake is Microris fulvius. But as we can see on the Texas coral snake, again, the head is pretty much the same width as the body. It doesn't stand out. It doesn't stand out from the body as it would on a rattlesnake, copperhead, or a cottonmouth. And again, the same pattern repeats itself. It has a that first yellow band behind the eyes, and then the second black band, which is much wider. A glossy appearance, smooth scales, long cylindrical body. And another feature we will discuss is when you look at the tail of this Texas coral snake, there's no red on the tail. It's just alternating black and yellow rings. 
the Eastern Coral Snake also has this feature. As we can see here on this Eastern Coral Snake, the very end of the tail is ringed in black and yellow with no red. Now we'll take a look at the third species of coral snake, which is the Arizona coral snake, Microroids urizanthus. They are placed in a different genus, the Microroids, or Microroides, if you will. These snakes differ from the other coral snakes in the Microroids genus. Uh, these differences include one pair of chin shields, which are the, are the chin scales, pretty much, and 17 rows of dorsal scales, so the scales that are on the body itself. But they are still a venomous coral snake. And I'll throw up a map here. This fit the typical coral snake body type as we discussed earlier the small rounded head that is the same width as the rest of the body a long a long cylindrical body with a glossy appearance due to the smooth scales and the Arizona coral snake is often ringed in white not yellow but white red and black and at the end of the tail we can see even on the Arizona coral snake that there's no red, the very end of the tail is ringed in black and white. fit the some Arizona coral snakes do have a cream to yellowish tint to the to their white bands. And here's another look at an Arizona coral snake showing the tip of the tail banded in black and white. Now both the Eastern Coral Snake pictured here and the Texas Coral Snake, they have varying amounts of black speckling within the red bands. And the red bands are bordered by thinner yellow bands. So each red and black band is interrupted by a thinner yellow band in both the Texas and the Eastern Coral Snake. So even if this photo was black and white, with experience, you'd be able to recognize this snake as a coral snake. Now. But you should be able to recognize the typical body shape of a coral snake without relying on color. And here's a closer look at the head of an Arizona coral snake. Small, beady, round eyes rounded, almost bullet-shaped head that's no wider than the rest of the body. And on the Arizona coral snake, the narrower white bands tend to be a little bit wider comparatively when you compare it to the Texas and the uh, Eastern coral snake. So there you go. I hope you learned a little bit about how to recognize a coral snake and remember in the United States we have three species of coral snake all three are venomous elapids they should be left alone coral snakes are very shy and secretive they want nothing to do with us they're not out to get us they're not out to kill us they're not out to bite us and in fact the only way you're really going to ever get bit by a coral snake is if you're grabbing a coral snake and then they will thrash back and forth trying to sink those fangs in but well, only when grabbed only when harassed when they're left alone they're 100 percent harmless thanks for watching please subscribe to the channel if you have any additional questions please ask in the comments below the video and i'll see you next time on hfe herpetology for everyone